The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that at the core of sin is a rejection of God and the refusal to accept His love. And this rejection and refusal are manifested in a disregard for His commandments. So the question then is, can an infant reject God's love? Can an infant break the Ten Commandments? If not, then why does the Church encourage the baptism of infants? What is this original sin that they have committed even before being born? The doctrine of original sin can be traced back to the early 5th century, with St. Augustine being one of its major proponents. Based on the book of Genesis, original sin refers to the act of disobedience of God's command committed by Adam and Eve by abusing their freedom. The result of this choice was quite fatal. The harmony between human beings and God, between human beings themselves and that between human beings and creation was broken. So far, so good. So what does all of this have to do with you and with your newborn child, you'll ask? Why do you need to baptize your child for something someone did centuries ago? Well, this is where it gets interesting. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans tells us, Sin came into the world through one man, and his sin brought death with it. As a result, death has spread to the whole human race because everyone has sinned. By yielding to the tempter, Adam and Eve committed a personal sin. But this sin affected the human nature that they would then transmit in a fallen state. Original sin is a sin contracted and not committed, a state and not an act. Each of us inherits original sin, but it is not a personal fault of us. It is a deprivation for each of us of original holiness and justice. So essentially, original sin refers to our flawed and weak human nature, our inclination to sin even when we don't want to. As St. Paul in his letter to the Romans mentions, if I do, what I don't want to do, this means that I am no longer the one who does it. Instead, it is the sin that lives in me. Now coming back to our infants, babies too are born with this weak human nature tainted by original sin. And therefore, children also have the need of a new birth in baptism. Baptism is the symbol of faith which one has received as a gift from God. A gift which requires a human response. The children who are baptized as infants grow up as Christian children responding to God's gift as they develop their faculties and their capabilities, living within a Christian family and later on in a Christian community of the parish. Since the earliest times, baptism has been administered to children, for it is a grace and a gift of God. Baptism wipes out original sin and restores us to communion with God. The next question that's probably on your mind could be, why do we continue to sin even after receiving baptism as infants? Shouldn't baptism fix our weak human nature once and for all? The Church teaches us that baptism, by imparting the life of Christ's grace, erases original sin and turns a man back to God. But baptism doesn't take away the tendency towards sin. It only restores our ability to have access to holiness and justice. You would have noticed that generally, we tend to repeat our sins during each confession we go for. Each of us has our weaknesses and shortcomings. For some of us, it could be an addiction. For others, certain behavioral traits like getting angry, for instance. And for others, it could be something serious which could involve breaking one of the Ten Commandments. And so, as human beings born with a weak nature, 
that tends towards sin. We all are engaged in a constant spiritual battle. So how do we win this spiritual battle? How do we overcome these weaknesses in our nature? St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We need to seek this strength through the sacrament of reconciliation, the Eucharist, living a life of prayer and wholehearted dependence on God. Also, when necessary, we must also be open to seek help from professional counsellors as well. It is going to be a slow and difficult journey. But be assured, with God on your side, there is no weakness that you cannot overcome. So though there are many battles that we have to face in the outside world, the most important battle is the one that goes on within.